I knew I was in dire shape when they when they put me on the on the cart and brought me into the trainer room. All you see is my arms go down and I'm still trying to walk. And behind me, you just see my legs just just dragging, just just like a, a wounded soldier. After the anger, and after the hostility, and after the the, the thoughts of, the thoughts of this just isn't worth living anymore. Um, as I started to go away, I started to, to almost take on a role of, of, of I had to accept this as it was, or I was just not going to make it. I wasn't going to survive this. And uh, I stepped across the line like I did 100 times before um, my entire 16-year football career. I'd had a whole lot of injuries before, but this time I, I stepped across the line, I took the hit. And when I took the hit, I knew some, I knew it was a big hit. I knew that there was something wrong. But I was, my adrenaline was so much of the game. I was still in the game. I was still the defensive end of the game. And we take scout film so you can, you can come back and actually see how the other team did. When we look back on the scout film and I take the hit, and I'm walking with my hands, and at that point, at that point I knew something was, was terribly wrong. that worked on was my mentor in undergrad and as she's doing the pinwheel test on on one of the techs or one of the trainers is doing the pinwheel test on my lower leg to check for for sensory function i i couldn't feel that the i knew that she was back there about to do it but the look on my mentor trainer's face i just won't forget it you could you could see the panic in her face When it came to the re reality that I was paralyzed and that I may not walk again, is is when there was just a total shift in, in my consciousness. I mean, I went from being uh, 21, 6'2", 250 pounds, captain of the football team, small college All-American, uh, private college All-American, sack leader, all the things that I felt defined me. All, all of that, all the things I've worked up in my 16-year football career that made me feel like that's who I was, all went away, just shattered in an instant. And as that, that was the realization, the paralysis was bad. But, but what was happening in my head was, what did it mean that was left with me? What, what was left with me? I'm, at, I'm at not only at the bottom, but I've gone so far behind and below what I thought the bottom of, the, of my life was about, that my whole entire identity was just shaken to its core. I mean, I always thought I was gonna be either a cosmetic surgeon or an orthopedic surgeon. And um, I still hold those, those professions in, in very high regard. I could not see myself doing anything other than what I'm doing right now. I love being a chiropractor. I'm great at being a chiropractor. And it's, it's part of who I am. It's not, I don't punch a clock at nine and then punch out at six o'clock and become something else. It's just, it's who I am year round. You get to some defining moments in your life. And a lot of it, the outside stuff, your house, your car, or the things that are, are just your stuff, they tend to go away. And, and in those moments, you really find out what it is that makes you tick and what it is that you really want. But I think, again, if you look back at being paralyzed the, on the football field and kind of being struck down, brought me back to being grounded to what it is that I love, this whole recession, I think, has done this for a lot of us. We, we've been struck down and um, brought back to the things that we find important, the things that are, are really important that we hold dear to our heart, the things that we're, we're willing to fight very hard for is what we're going to be left with. I think all of us inside want to help others. I think the general feeling of most people in this world is to help someone out, to help someone out. And when people come into my office, they're coming to our office because they want help. Like for, for the gentleman who comes in who, who has a herniated disc or, or for, for whatever reason he can't walk anymore, and, and the staff and other patients see him hobble into the office, and we do three, four, or five months worth of treatment, and they see him in a jogging suit, and, and now he's got a heart monitor on because he wants to check. He went from being somewhat of a, you know, a handicap to now the guy's working out and jogging. You can't even put a price tag on that. And we actually get to start them off and see where they are, take a snapshot of their life 
where they are right at that moment when they walk in. And then we take a couple snapshots along the way. And there's nothing that makes me more proud of myself and, and for my kids to see and patients to actually experience themselves is watch people take on the responsibility themselves. They can't just put it all on us, but take on the responsibility. We help them take on responsibility and watch themselves become more empowered. It's my emotional paycheck. I mean, it's, it's, it's a priceless feeling that I, I can't wait to get into the office and see that, that, that patient. And I, what it taught me was just sometimes you gotta roll the punches, just keep an open mind, calm. It's somewhat of a journey. I mean, I'm looking back at the practice was 12 years ago. We had a lot of fun building practice. And looking back on it, it might have been probably some of the best times that, that my wife and I had ever had was building it, was, was getting, was the journey as far as going from the startup, from a thought to the actual practice. And now to see what it's grown into is, if you would have asked me back then, 10 years ago, would the practice have looked like it is today? I would have said, I could only wish. I could have only wished. And, and here it is. And it's just, just sometimes you have to endure. Endure through it. And, and it usually pays off.